Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. Right, so Dust Deep Dive is out and she does actually look, well, quite mighty fine. We're gonna have typical mutant shenanigans with gaining a ton of prowess, this time combined with some extremely useful immunities, punishing shrug-offs, as in many mutant champions do in order to counter skill champs, ability to ignore unstoppable, as well as few other party tricks, like a special three that costs no power for longer fights. So, uh, she does look quite interesting for sure. Um, not entirely sure, you know, whether or where she will land ultimately in the game, because there are, again, some things that I'm kind of cautious of. For instance, a lot will depend on her crit rate, because uh, her mechanics kind of seem to be somewhat similar in like Storm X, where if you do crit on your specials, you're doing great if you don't it doesn't look that uh, impressive but there is a lot to like about the champion so let's kind of break it down obviously again she will have the better matchups against the skill class with plenty of damage she will also have some mephisto alike aura that will be dealing damage that could potentially become a problem on defense as well especially if you're not confident awaiting her special attack so that is going to be quite important and like Mephisto, this is going to be like physical damage that you can mitigate by blocking. Uh, you take 60% less of it, but we're going to get to that. So let's start the breakdown. That's the immune to bleed, poison, and shock. So those are exact same immunities as I believe Sandman has. Needless to say, those are very, very good immunities, right? Because bleed is probably the most common uh, damage over time effect in the game. And having poison and shock immunity is also quite nice especially when you can combine for bleed and poison immunity completely offsetting the recall masteries. Thus, light and heavy attacks do not make contact with the opponent, which will mean that you can, again, uh, use that to your advantage in order to, you know, bypass some damage back mechanics, uh, like a Tuma, for instance, or Electro, or so on and so forth. So when Dust performs a well-timed block, incoming attacks uh, have a 100% chance to glance as a defender. This triggers on any block against basic attacks. So the fact that you can glance on parries, again, will enable you to parry plenty of champions, which otherwise you would potentially struggle with, such as, let's say, Werewolf, which would place ruptures on you through block, or something like... Uh, um, well, when you parry bullets, I don't believe you get the bleed, but... You get the point. There is, however, a point in her kit that is already making me extremely annoyed. And this is kind of like a new trend with Kabam, and it's getting real old real fast. And that is, if the opponent has the willpower mastery active, it is removed. Now, Kabam obviously placed it because otherwise you'd be healing pretty much the entire fight because she does place debuffs on you. But uh, my answer to that would be, like, so what? You know, she doesn't reverse the region. If you use her offensively, obviously you just stack on plenty of debuffs and let the spare mitigate that. And, uh, yeah, this is just frustrating. This is a very simple mechanic to basically ensure that every time you meet dust, you're going to end up using potions or you can, you know, take chip damage and stuff like that. And it's just annoying at this point. We... Uh, had it on Photon, then we had it on Onslaught, where if you land a single parry, uh, you know, if you parry by accident, that's it, willpower is gone. And now we have it here. Uh, at this point, I hope we do not see this come back again. It, can, it is kind of like a new thing or a new toy that Kabam has unlocked. And again, it was fine in moderate doses, but I think it's just going to be extremely frustrating to go up against yet again. Right. So, uh, we talked about her light attacks not making contact. Uh, we talked about the glancing as well. Whenever the opponent or their block is struck by a medium attack or has a hit glance, they are inflicted with a sand debuff for 6 seconds. Uh, so, here we talked about the willpower. And you basically work sand in a way where you place sand debuffs on opponent, then you purify them, <coughs> and that is how you ramp up. Then you either throw charge a heavy attack or uh, throw level 3 in order to enter your sand mode, which converts the sand or into prowess, and then you start doing your damage. Basically, that's her rotation. 
So you ramp her up with mediums and lights. Uh, so here we can see that. Punishing a heavy attack or a special attack with a light or a medium. Inflicts two sun debuffs as well. When an opponent purifies a debuff, dust deals a burst of damage. Physical damage, uh, a burst of physical damage and inflicts one indefinite sun passive. If the purified debuff was sand, then you inflict two additional sand passives. And then when you enter your storm mode, you can convert all of them into prowesses. As an attacker does light attacks, okay, purify her most recently inflicted, inflicted personal debuff on the opponent on hit, inflicting dust with an incinerator plasma effect will crystallize the sand, removing one sand effect from her opponent. And, you know, that's probably going to be one decent, you know, countermeasure against her if you're going up against her own defense. Uh, so here we can see that Bishop inflicting incinerate does remove sand from him. And at the same time, when you go up against somebody like Kingpin, you do significantly punish that. Um, your heavy attack activates your sandstorm. And once it expires, it goes in cooldown for 8 seconds. I believe the duration of your sandstorm is 16 seconds. As a defender, when the dust opponent reaches 5 sand effects, dust spins up a sandstorm for 8 seconds. This does not have a cooldown. So that is going to be the limit. You do not want dust to get to 5 sand effects. Otherwise, she will be dealing damage to you when you're nearby. So when a sandstorm is spun up, dust removes all sand effects on the opponent. For each effect removed, dust gains 3.5 prowess passive until the sandstorm ends. Sandstorm and its prowess effects are not affected by ability accuracy modification. Max prowess 99. So you basically get 350 or 340, you know, 6.5 uh, uh, special attack increase, which is decent. It's nothing out of this world, but it's, you know, it's solid damage increase. I did notice that her base damage is quite poor on the other hand, like it often is with these massive special attack champions. We're going to have to see exactly how well or poor it does. So here we go. Whenever Sandstorm is active, Dust would inflict Sand Effect. Instead, she gains additional Prowess Passive and Power Efficiency. Power Efficiency Passive reducing the cost of Special Attacks by 3% for 8 seconds. Dust Light Attacks pause these Power Efficiency Passives for 0.3 seconds, meaning you will be able to likely spam multiple Special Attacks during the Sandstorm. And here we have that in action. Also, Sandstorm is paused during opponent's special attacks and expires 50% slower during Dust's special attacks. Additionally, Sandstorm cannot end during Dust's specials. There we go. Uh, opponents are dealt 873.88 physical damage every second. This damage scales with base stack only and is reduced by 60% while the opponent's blocking. So this is going to be annoying, but not as annoying as Mephisto, because this obviously doesn't scale with the modified attack to begin with. And also you know, cannot be stacked. Additionally, when Sandstorm is active, Dust gains a Grit passive, and Grit passive is fairly straightforward. You just ignore unblockable effects. So, you know, that's quite helpful. As an attacker, the opponent's basic attacks have a 60% chance to glance when hitting Dust's block. You know, that's nice too. So we cover this one, and there we go. You can see that once the Sandstorm gets activated, you're going to end up taking damage right there. Uh, your level 1 basically just, you know, inflict additional sand. It's kind of like a damage or a damage spammy special that you will be able to activate multiple times with your power efficiencies. Or you can use it to ramp up quicker in some slower matchups. And her level 2 uh, serves to inflict uh, vulnerabilities, physical vulnerabilities on the opponent. Three of them that you can purify. And once you do purify them yourself with the light attacks, you have increased potency of them. So after your level 2, you want to go in for a full combo, and you're going to be purifying these very, very quickly and easily. And then your level 3. This special attack does not consume power, but cannot be activated while Sandstorm is active. This special attack spins up a Sandstorm for 22 seconds, which is obviously longer, and does not have a cooldown. While this Sandstorm is active, whenever Dust would inflict Sand Effect, she also deals a burst of 436 physical damage. So this is quite interesting. Because we have a level 3 that does not consume power, but you cannot activate it whilst Sansom is already active, right? Uh, so if you you can theoretically just get level 3 and, you know, drop your level 3s, but you would have to wait 22 seconds in order to reactivate it. Obviously, the way to go would be use your level 3, 
then level two and get your power efficiencies and then spam level ones or something of the sort. Uh, it's quite interesting, unique concept in a way. Uh, quite like that. Uh, let me know what you guys think about it. We still have her signature ability to discuss. Uh, when either champion's combo meter reaches a multiple of 10, Dust has a up to 100% chance to inflict a sand debuff for 6 seconds. This is probably going to be primarily a defensive ability, I would say. When fighting against skilled champions and while Sandstorm is active, Dust gains Steadfast passive. Steadfast passive lets you block unblockable attacks which again uh, can be quite useful against skill champions, but that's not nothing we haven't seen on mutants before, basically. And whenever dust prevents bleed effect Y immunity, there's a 99.99% .99 chance to inflict one sand effect on the opponent for six seconds. And again, this is uh, just to make her, you know, tougher defensive matchup, I'd say. I don't think this will have that much of an impact offensively in general. So it does seem to me that she's a perfectly viable champion, at the very least offensively, unawakened. And uh, defensively, we, well, we need to see how good of a defender she's going to be, period. But uh, signature ability definitely does make her harder to fight against. Because, you know, whenever you start hitting her, you're going to get that debuff on you that, you know, can get purified or still could work towards getting her to five debuffs. And once that happens, she can activate her Sandstorm. And if you bring in a Bleed Champion, God forbid, the Sandstorm is going to be always active. So it's going to be interesting to see her defensive potential in general. Obviously, her like preferred matchups will be skill champions that purify debuffs themselves, because then you can purely focus on your medium attacks and punishing the heavies and specials to ramp up much, much, much quicker. Uh, but uh, she's definitely not limited just to the skill matchups, in my opinion. However, we will need to see the speed of her. Ultimately, you know, uh, she's a definition of a champion that could either turn out amazing or be underwhelming. And again, that largely does depend on stuff like her crit rate, her base damage, how quickly you can ramp her up, how quickly she can close out the fights. And last but not least, also her defensive potential. Because it's uh, much harder to be like, wildly recognized as a champion and be very popular if you're just offensive champion these days uh defensive capabilities do matter quite a large amount uh today as well as how well you match up against some other top champions you know whether she's going to be able to take some of the tougher mutant defenders whether she's going to be able to take some mystic defenders and so on and so forth which uh you know it does seem that she might but again a lot of that knowledge will come to us through trial and error and seeing more gameplay than just the little bit in deep dive so far. So ultimately, like truth to be told, again, I don't particularly care for either of the champions added this month as characters, because, you know, I don't know them. They're like, relatively niche. They're not the champions that get me quite excited based on who they are in the comics, for sure. However, both of them do show promise. Uh, perhaps Ironheart a little bit more so, but I'm still very optimistic about Sand as well. Both of them do look like uh, worthy additions to the game quality-wise, design and kit-wise, for sure. Let me know what you guys think, which champion you look forward more to get your hands on, Ironheart or Dust. But that will be it for this video, and I'm going to catch you guys soon. Bye-bye. Hello there, guys, and welcome back to the channel. So we have all been playing 